Hi, welcome back to the channel. Today's topic is do not accept negative things as your truth. This is something I've been hearing in the spirit a lot recently, or not recently, but for a while now, is that we tend to, as human beings, flawed human beings, only God is perfect, we sometimes tend to accept the negative things that people say to us or imply as our truth. And we absolutely should not be doing that. And I'm very guilty of this. I was in a relationship with someone who used to, when we'd argue, of course, I mean, it could be, I mean, he explained it was just the act of maliciousness and that it was because of his own insecurities. And I was thankful that he explained things to me after the fact, but he would call me um, ugly like straight to my face when we'd be arguing. He's like, you're so ugly, you know? And if anyone else would have told me that, it wouldn't have affected me. But because he was someone who I was in love with at the time, it it deeply cut me. And I actually started to believe that about myself. And and I let him, I let him um, affect my self image. And I actually tried to change my self image for him in order to meet his expectation. And that is that is not how God wants us to be. Like, we are not, we should, and that's why it's such an important thing to get to know God and get to know who you are in Christ and how he sees you and how valuable you are to him. Because honestly, I was blind before. I was blind to so many things. Like, I didn't, and just spiritually not awake. I was spiritually asleep because I didn't know my worth and value in God and that God values us just the way we are and loves us unconditionally. And his love far surpasses any love of another human being because we're flawed, right, as humans. I myself have a, a lot of flaws about myself, but I definitely look back and think that I shouldn't have tried to change myself just to please someone else or to meet their expectations okay so in the spirit i hear this too a lot when and okay so this is how the devil works let's learn his strategies so that we know how to fight against him okay because this happens to me and so i'll be having i'll look at someone and i'll have a great thought about them like you know wow that person's in good shape or something and immediately after this is how sneaky the devil is but know this and you can you can rebuke it and fight against it immediately after i have a positive thought he sneaks in with like a evil negative thought about something about that person and like that thought will just kind of creep up and i won't rebuke it in time and it'll come through and then because um people can you know hear my thoughts then you know they'll 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 accept it into their spirit no no look at that that is not who i am like i am not a person who puts other people down like i am not that person and i will not identify with the tricks of the devil so you have to rebuke it when a thought comes like that you say rebuke it and if if people tell you negative things like know that it's a spirit in them Okay, the world is, is spiritual as much as it is physical. Things happen in the spirit before it happens in the physical. And we can get into a lot of these things um, even deeper, but we'll just stay on this subject. Not, ex not accepting negative things as our truth. Okay, so when someone tells you something negative or implies something negative towards you, don't, don't accept it into your spirit. Like, don't accept it as your truth, you know? In your mind, you can say, I rebuke that in the name of Jesus. If you're the person having the thought and you know that thought didn't come from you or God, it's not in alignment with God, you know who that came from and you have to rebuke it. So you say, I rebuke that thought. But as a person on the receiving end, because I've been on that side where people have told me really negative things or have tried to put word curses over my life, you can either say, I cancel that in the name of Jesus or I rebuke it in the name of Jesus. Okay, our words are powerful. Our, our words start out as thoughts. Our thoughts are powerful, but it becomes even more effective when they come out of our mouth in the form of words. So there's something about speaking scriptures that in spiritual warfare has even more effect than thinking, than thinking it. So you can either, if you're in a public place, 
you don't want to people to think you're crazy or something like I, I to this point i don't care like if even if i'm in public like be, because i know that things are more spiritual than they are physical then i'll say i'll say things like that like if someone is word cursing me i'll say i cancel that in the name of jesus or i rebuke that in the name of jesus if it's happening within my own head i'll say it to myself too i'll rebuke i rebuke that thought in the name of jesus okay all good things come from god so that means that all negative or bad things come from the devil and this is how the devil works through us and through people to attack us in our minds okay this is how he works i'm giving you that was confirmation Okay, the, he doesn't want you to know these things because then you won't know how to fight against it. Okay, and then that's where people fall into depression and to all kind of other emotions that God does not want you to have. Okay, so do not accept negative things that people say or imply towards you as your truth. They absolutely are not. You can rebuke it. You can cancel it. You can simply, if you don't want to use those terms, say, I don't accept that. That is not my truth. I am, I am wonderfully made. I'm handsome. I'm beautiful, I'm a good person, I have a great heart, my intentions are good in the name of Jesus. You know, just say those kind of things to yourself. Do not accept what other people say or imply to you as your truth. Know who you are in Christ. Jesus, Jesus died for you so we could be saved. God's love is unconditional, merciful, protective. He disciplines us. Without it, we would be running amok, right? It's kind of like, kids like if you don't if you don't discipline them and teach them how to do the the right things then they'll just be acting all crazy right i'm not a professional on that okay when we mess up he is always with us or i'm sorry he is always with us no matter what even when we mess up he's even when we're going through trials even when we're going through tribulations god is always with you and he has a plan he has a plan for it, okay, for all of it. You may not see it right then, that challenge or or that, you may not see his plan, but hindsight, you'll see it all worked out for your good and it's all a part of God's plan. Okay, Hebrews 13, five. Let your conversation be without covetousness. What is covetousness? That's envy, that's wanting what other people have. Okay, Hebrews 13, five. Let your conversation be without covetousness and be content with such things as ye have, for he hath said, I will never leave thee nor forsake thee. Okay, that always comes to mind, like when I'm going through something difficult, he will never leave me or forsake me. He's still here, the, there's, there's a plan for this. Okay, so the, um, the analogy I, I thought of was like clay. Okay, so when we're clay, before it goes into the kiln, before it's fired in a kiln, it's this moldable, like kind of Play-Doh substance, right? So think if I had a if I had a piece of clay here in my hand, and someone were to t tell me a negative comment, imagine me like pushing in part of the clay. Okay, it's moldable, right? The clay is affected by that thing. My thumb is a negative comment. Okay, so you you push in that clay and you leave an indention there. Okay, that's clay. That's when we don't know who we are in Christ. Okay, people can alter us, our emotions, our self-image, our self-efficacy. It can be altered, okay, by other people. It's this moldable thing. Okay, when we go through trials, when we go through tribulations, when we start learning about, when we become spiritually awakened and we start learning about who we are in Christ, that's the fire. That's, that's the fire. After you put a clay... A clay thing that's moldable and, and soft substance when you put it in fire under high heat and high temperature what is the result it becomes ceramic it's like a hard like substance it's ceramic it can't be if i had a ceramic cup right here if i was holding a ceramic cup and i tried to push in the the cup there there'd be no alteration to it it's still it'd still be a cup okay remember the clay is, bef is before we know who we are in Christ. We're moldable by everything around us, our environment, by people's comments, by what they imply towards us. You know, offense. Offense comes from the devil. Whenever you're offended, that that is from the devil. Whenever you're offended at what people say or do, that's from the devil. Just know that. Rebuke it. Rebuke offense. We could have a whole nother video just on offense alone. Okay, so offense. My thumb is offense. Someone says something to you. Clay. We're moldable. 
the change the shape of the clay. Once it becomes a, a cup after it goes into the fire and it becomes a hard substance, okay, offense, negative comments will not change the form of a cup. Okay, it's now a rock-like substance that cannot be altered. Okay, and that's when you know who you are in Christ. When you know who you are in Christ, other people's opinions of you cannot alter your sense, your self-esteem. They cannot enter your sense of, they cannot alter your sense of self. Okay, and that's how God wants us to be. He wants us to be like a hard substance, like a rock-like substance. Okay, that's my analogy, is a clay the, the fire are challenging times. It's God's pruning. It's God's purifying. You know, sometimes he lets bad things happen just so that we can go into the fire to come out as a ceramic piece, something that cannot be altered by our outside environment. Okay, that's, that's how God works. Scripture on God is my rock, which is what we become after we cannot be altered, after we go through the fire. Psalm 31 3 for thou art my rock and my fortress therefore thy name's sake lead me and guide me Psalm 18 1 to 2 I will love thee O Lord my strength the Lord is my rock and my fortress and my deliverer my God my strength in whom I will trust my buckler and the horn of my salvation and my high tower in God you are you are always he's your rock okay he's he's always the same you know in life you're gonna go through change change is inevitable you're gonna change will happen but with god he's always the same he will never leave you he'll never forsake you his love is unconditional he'll always be there for you there isn't anyone else who's gonna do that or be like that he always has your best interest in mind okay he's the unchanging god like the almighty god omniscient omnipotent on omnipresent He's everywhere at once. He knows all and he sees all things. Okay, and he wants you to be solid in him. He wants you to be solid in him. Okay, unaltered by the environment because that's how the devil works. The devil works through other people telling you things. Okay, he wants you to be unaltered. Another story from the Bible is um, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. Okay, so Nebuchadnezzar, built this altar for himself and said that everyone needs to worship the altar but shadrach meshach and abednego were like we're not going to i'm sorry we're not going to worship that because we worship our god alone remember god is a jealous god so you can't be worshiping a whole bunch of things and god it's like there's one god okay um i respect all other beliefs but my beliefs are there's one god who created all things in in seven days one god so shadrach meshach and abednego were felt the same and they said we're not going to worship your god so the king was enraged and he said whoever doesn't worship the altar that i built will be thrown into the fire and because of their resistance he was even more upset so what he did was he turned the fire up seven times hotter he turned the fire up seven times hotter and he threw he threw in um shadrach meshach and abednego bound so they couldn't escape like the fire was so hot that the people, the um, the guards who threw them in the fire, they died just, just by the heat from getting near to it. But when they threw them in the fire, there was someone walking around it and he looked, um, Nebuchadnezzar looked into the fire. He said, I thought we threw in three people bound. There are four people walking in there and one looks like the son of God. Okay, so Jesus was in the fire with them he didn't prevent it from happening. He didn't prevent the challenge from happening to them. It happened to them, but he was with them. So when they came out of the fire, like unsinged, un unharmed, unhurt, they didn't even smell like smoke, okay? Then because of this miracle that was done right in front of Nebuchadnezzar's eyes, he, he started worshiping their God. So the challenge had to happen in order for Nebuchadnezzar to become spiritually awakened. And he started worshiping the same God of Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. Unharmed, unscathed, un didn't even smell like smoke coming out of the fire. Okay, so that's another story that's related to what we're saying, that sometimes we do go through things. Not only, don't only accept like negative things that people say towards you 
and let it let it alter you know who you are in christ know who you are in god know how god sees you and how much god loves you but also don't let the challenges um bring you down i mean if you if you do feel some kind of way about it like you're you're entitled to that for a while but don't don't let it bring you down you know um know that god has a a, a better plan for you that his plans are always for good they're never for evil and that if you have faith with faith in him and you are closer to him and you pray you read the bible you you're aware of your intentions you keep your heart pure you know you don't wish evil things upon people or do evil don't let the devil don't let the devil and you can rebuke it he's very sneaky know his strategies rebuke it fight against him then god will be there for you he will be there for you in in the most difficult situations of your life or hindsight when you look back on that challenge you'll see how he played a part and how it all fit into the puzzle of his plan for your life the best plan god has a best plan for your life okay god loves you have a great day. Happy Valentine's Day.